Um, hi, everyone. I hope everyone's doing okay today. Um, if you've been in the many interest group meetings today, I hope your caffeine of choice is holding, holding you, holding you up. <laughs> um, so, okay. So you guys can see my screen. Is that correct? Cool. Okay. So, um, uh, Jennifer Pringle is going to talk today about fiscal year end stuff. Um, and then, so I'm going to ask Jennifer to talk first, and then we can talk about bugs and whatever else you guys um, want to talk about. I am not going to go over every single one of these bugs because as I started like gathering these up, I realized through like many reasons that we haven't actually done like a bug kind of roundup since February. So there's a lot of them. Um, but yeah, so we can sort of like pick and choose if there's something you guys want to talk about in particular, or um, there's a couple I know I want to call out. So, um, but anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jennifer. So she has as much time as she so desires. Um, and uh, Jennifer, do you want to share? Or are you just going to chat or what do you want to do? Um, I want to share because okay. I set some so things up as examples. Okay. But it says the host has disabled screen sharing. Dang it. Okay, let me figure out how to not do that. Um, let's see. Okay, who can share all participants? Oh, it looks like it's letting me now. Maybe I okay. couldn't share because you were currently sharing. No, no, I, I never have the right setting on, so it was me. <laughs> okay, I think okay. you should be able to see our training server in Evergreen. Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about what we do here at the BC Libraries Cooperative. Um, I feel like we've talked about this in the past as well, um, but I always find it helpful to talk about what other people are doing and figure out if it's similar to what you're doing or different and whether there's things that you can take from what other people are doing to make your process better. Um, so I'm just going to throw up one other link here. Um, so just uh, for those who uh, don't know much about our consortium, um, our libraries do most things, especially around acquisitions, um, on their own. Uh, we don't have a lot of oversight in the way that some consortia do. Um, uh, similarly with cataloging. Um, the libraries uh, are, uh, follow policy, but um, it's very much up to them. So we have a year-end checklist that we recommend all of our libraries follow at year-end. Um, and we have two different uh, fiscal years operating. Um, and I have a segue at the end into the discussion about uh, fiscal years, uh, Tiffany. Um, so maybe those are the first bugs to talk about at the end. Um, so we have libraries that run a April to March fiscal year and libraries that run a January to December. So we go through year end twice a year with our libraries. And uh, we tell them before doing year end, they need to go through this list and make sure they have done everything on it. Because we find that throughout the year, um, items get, or line items get missed being received, or they get missed being added to invoices, or invoices missed being closed. Um, there's no reason why libraries can't go through this list um, on a regular basis, you know, every four months or something, um, but it's at year end that we are reminding libraries to go through. So if I take us into our staff client here um, and go into acquisitions, the general search, especially the new general search, is really handy for checking a lot of this stuff very easily now. So if we do a purchase order search, the first, oops, let's retype that. The first thing we tell libraries is to check for any pending purchase orders. And if they have pending purchase orders to either um, activate them or delete them. Um, and we have the script that uh, Tiffany and Pines came up with 
so that if libraries remove all line items from a purchase order um, and change the name to be delete um, or to be prefixed with delete, if that's a pending purchase order, it's automatically deleted overnight. Um, and I will give a uh, plug for this uh, script that Tiffany shared with us because it has made things a lot easier for libraries to clean up uh, pending purchase orders that, you know, duplicated ones because they accidentally loaded the file twice or something else. Um, and it really does make it a lot easier for the libraries to uh, clean that up. As well as, oh, it uh, looks like we got a question. Oh yeah, NC Cardinal is using it as well now. It's great. I would love if it was like an integral part of Evergreen Acquisitions at some point, um, but the script does beautiful things for now. Um, also, uh, we tell libraries to search for invoices that haven't been closed. Um, so before they do year, year end, they need to close all invoices that are still open. Um, and doing that often resolves some, if not all, of the line items that show up that have been received but not invoiced. Um, and that's kind of the two big pieces we find is line items that have been received but haven't been invoiced because somebody forgot to close um, the purchase or, or sorry, the invoice. Um, in some cases, somebody has forgotten to create the invoice. That can also happen. Um, or uh, line items where the invoice has been created, but somebody forgot to actually mark them as received. And if I come into the reporter here, uh, we have uh, two templates. Uh, one that is line items that have been invoiced but not received, and the other that is line items that have been received but not invoiced. Really fun to try and make sure that you have run both reports and not one report twice um, because of the similar names. Um, but we have every library run that. Sometimes we run it uh, when we're helping libraries with year end. And so here is an example of the received but not invoiced. So here we have four items that have been received, but they're not linked to an invoice yet, um, or they're on an invoice that hasn't been closed. Um, and then we have three items on this one, which are invoiced, but not received. So the libraries have uh, all of the information uh, to find these line items, um, including the line item ID, which I think is often the most useful in these cases. Um, so that they can uh, find those and receive them um, or find them an invoice for them. And ideally a library doesn't run year end until both of these reports are blank. Um, and if these are reports that you are interested in, uh, the information of how to set them up is available on the acquisitions report uh, wiki page um, under line items. Uh, so the two that we run are there. Uh, we also have our libraries run a fund report before they run year end. Um, really, this is so that they get a snapshot of what year end or what their funds looked like before they touched anything um, in case something goes sideways during the year end process. Uh, you can see on our training server, we only have one fund that has anything encumbered or spent out of, um, but most libraries will have significantly more detail on this fund report. Um, so once libraries have uh, dealt with all their pending purchase orders, dealt with any line items that have been invoiced but not received, uh, received all invoices that were actually, or sorry, received all items that they've actually physically received, invoiced all the items that should be paid for in the current fiscal year, and closed all their open invoices, and then checked in case there's anything that's received but not invoiced. Uh, the last thing we do is uh, tell them to verify the funding source doesn't have a negative balance. 
Um, and I believe that this is because the acquisitions admin gets upset if there's a negative balance, but I haven't tried it recently. I don't think we've actually tried it since the new um, admin interface. So that probably needs a, a test. Um, there's no harm in not having a negative balance when you go to run your end. Um, and then we tell libraries um, not to run your end between uh, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Pacific, um, because that's when our system pulls in all the EDI invoices. Um, and there can be some uh, issues if the if your end is running at the same time as new invoice information is coming in, um, as well as just load on the system. Um, if we come back into uh, the staff client here and into acquisitions administration and fund administration, um, the fund interface really is uh, so much better since it got angularized, um, including the fiscal propagation and rollover. It looks nicer and it just works better. Um, so you have the option to run a dry run. Definitely recommend running the dry run. So if we uh, tell it to perform fiscal year closeout and run the dry run, it'll do that. So I'm going to hit process um, and it can tell me that it's actually not going to do anything, um, which is interesting because we have propagate and rollover set to yes. So it should be creating uh, funds for 2024. Let's just make sure we haven't already created those ones. Yeah, there's no, none of them have been created. So the, in this case, the fiscal, uh, the dry run is not actually telling us what it's going to do, um, which I'm not sure if that's a problem with our training server um, or if something else is going on here. Um, and Tiffany's saying, I think I remember that it didn't show any data, a bug. I, for some reason, I thought it was fixed with the new admin interface, but I'm guessing not. Um, one day we'll have a dry run that uh, gives us information. The other thing before we actually do though, is um, I'm gonna go into local administration and into the library settings editor. Um, and I should mention um, our training server runs uh, currently 3.9 point ish. Um, and so uh, depending on what version you're running, some of this may look the same, may look different. And we'll just let the library settings editor uh, think about things for a moment. Um, because from the majority of our libraries, they do need this allow funds to be rolled over without bringing the money along. Um, because most of our libraries, if they don't spend the money, they don't get to keep it. Um, so for most of our libraries, this is set to true. And if we go back into acquisitions administration, and I'm not sure if this is one that requires a login and logout. So let's see. So just bear with me as I log out and log back in. And now when we go into administration, we should see things that look a little different. Um, 
So we now have this additional checkbox, which is limit fiscal year closeout to encumbrances. So when we perform that fiscal year, we can tell it that it's just moving the encumbrances and not moving any of the actual money. Um, and if you don't move the money, that money actually gets put back into, uh, any unspent money gets put back into your funding sources. Um, I'm not going to, well, you know, let's hit process. It's not gonna do very exciting things. Um, if you uncheck dry run, it does have this new text that appears, which I think is really fun in the Angular um, fund administration, um, because it is warning you that this is going to do a closeout for real. And I think having it kind of appear and disappear as dry run is unchecked is really helpful because it, you know, it really wants you to know this. Um, so I'm going to hit process here. And now we're getting a summary that actually has useful information with, in it. So 21 funds have been propagated for the fiscal year for 2024. And we have uh, $197.70 in encumbrances rolled over to 2024. For most of our libraries, that's a significantly higher number, um, especially for libraries that do a lot of ordering at the end of the year to try and use up any unspent money and then roll anything that doesn't arrive uh, before they do year end over into the next year. Um, so I'm just going to close that. And then the final step that we would recommend libraries do is run a fund report um, for the year they just closed and make sure everything looks as expected on that report and then run a fund report for the new year and just make sure that everything, uh, all of the encumbrances that have moved over look as expected. Um, we strongly encourage libraries to check all of that and then let us know right away if something doesn't look right, because it's a lot easier for us to adjust things in the database if needed before other actions have been taken in acquisitions. Um, and that is uh, year end and how we do it in at the BC Libraries Cooperative in the SICA Consortium. Any questions before we talk about fiscal calendars? Does anybody do it similarly or very differently from us? I'll break the silence. We do it similar, similarly. <laughs> it's a hard word. <laughs> we have like the list of um, reports that we use on our wiki and basically like, here's the report. Do this, this, and this with this report. Here's the report. Do this, this, and this. So yeah, but it's all pretty much the same stuff. Yeah. Well, and I really think that like, the general search, like the new general search and the updates to fund administration, um, even just with the fact that they're angular and look better, um, I think it makes your end easier. Um, uh, and, oh, I was just gonna oh. say, and Christine Morgan shared in the chat that uh, theirs is very similar to ours. Um, CW Mars, am I guessing right, Christine? Noble, actually. Noble, sorry. I was in the right area of the country. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Apologies. Sometimes no it's problem. hard to keep track. <laughs> we love CW Mars, too. <laughs> I was just going to say, I don't know when they came in. I think they, I, I think they're in master or main now. Um, but as far as like new, like tweaks or whatever, the fiscal propagation and rollover, there's a new permission that you can like limit if you want to do that. So like at Pines, we have that, um, or we have that on our production server because um, people would be too eager to go ahead and roll over. And so they would be like, I'm done. And then they would hit the button and I would go check it for them and they were not done. And so it would be like the unraveling was 
a pain. So basically they're just like, I'm done. And I go look and I'm like, okay. And then I push the button for them. But um, so there's that if you wanted to like limit that um, to who can do that. And then also just um, in the library settings editor, that um, setting that's like with a uh, roll things forward without bringing the money along, it's just called roll rollover encumbrances only or something like that. Yeah. It's, so it's just like more straightforward with this. Well, and I mean, we have the same issue sometimes where people think they're ready, run your end. And then, as you said, there's unraveling that has to happen. Um, and I think acquisitions feels at least like one of the parts of Evergreen where unraveling is really complicated if you have to do it. Um, so trying to head off the need for any unraveling is really good. Um, the new permission, I'm pretty sure it came in 310 um, because Tiffany, I believe you have it, but we don't have it yet on 39. Um, and with the setting you're talking about, I actually have uh, your test server up here as well. Um, and if we go into local administration, Let's see if it's timed out on me, possibly. Oh, yeah. I thought you were going to say the server was broken, and I was going to be completely unsurprised. No, no, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it just timed out. <laughs> um, ooh, and it's the, it's the nice new library settings editor. Um, so here we go. Yeah, roll over. Oh, now it's doing search. So rollover encumbrances only is what that setting is now. And I think that is uh, a lot easier for people to understand than the current wording of that setting. Um, now that we've shifted over to uh, Tiffany's test server, um, I was looking this morning after you sent your email, Tiffany, um, and I'm very excited to see the fiscal year and fiscal calendar in in existence so you can actually look at it and it's not just a database table um but i have some questions Later. um and the biggest one is is like how do you tell evergreen which library is using a particular fiscal year um the right now you don't like right now there's no org well, like on those tables. So like, um, uh, so like we have always, always used this table. Like I just always had Chris be like, hey Chris, I need, you know, 2024 in the table or whatever. Um, so I think they're just accessible like to anyone because really because they weren't like client facing before, like they didn't really have to have an org you know, like limitation. Mm -hmm. So there's not one. Like, and as far as other than um, the load mark or records page, I don't think anything really uses these. <laughs> um, so, or, or at least right now they don't. Yeah, because the one piece we are really excited to have it do one day in the future is when you have a non-calendar fiscal year to have this funds filter stick with your fiscal year, your whole fiscal year, instead of swapping over when the calendar year changes. Is that like, like, um, you mean like when your funds propagate or like the interface? Well, so right now for our libraries that run in April to March uh, fiscal year, so if they are running, uh, a like, for example, 2022 to 2023 is their fiscal year, starting in April 2022, ending in, I guess, ended in March 2023. When they create their funds, they create them with the year 2000 or 2022. When we hit January 2023, this filter in the funds interface flipped over to 2023. So every time they come in to look at their funds between January 1st, 2023 and March 31st, or whenever they actually ran year end, 
they have to change this filter back to 2022. Does that make sense, Tiffany? Yes, sorry, I keep not hitting my unmute button. Yes, it does. Um, so there's, um, I don't know if it's on my, my mega list here or whatever, but I have a patch and we have it on production in Pines because we're just satisfied like as it is where it returns the year to a box up at the top where you can like select from the drop down and the box is sticky. So like for us, because we run into the same exact problem, you know, like the calendar year turns over, but we're still in, you know, mm -hmm. FY, whatever. Um, but since it's sticky, they set it once and they say we're in FY23 right now and it just stays FY23 all the time. So I have a patch for that, but the problem is that you can't kind of use the the year filter like on the column anymore because it's more like the box up there is controlling what you see so like you can only see one year at a time so i think there's like discussion on the bug about that and like for us at pines it was more important to like just have it be sticky all the time like that was more important um so uh, i haven't figured out how to work, work the filter in there yet so um but yeah because i know exactly what you mean it's really irritating is that patch on the bug on Launchpad? Yes. Um, let me see if I can find which. Because I feel like that's the kind of thing that we would be interested in testing as we start working towards our 311 upgrade. Because for our libraries, having that be sticky would also be more important than being able to filter and see multiple years. Because yeah. quite frankly, if you want to be able to see multiple years, you could just open another tab and change the drop down in the the top filter, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks like um I don't want to say it looks janky. Um, but like uh basically like it's here, I'll share my screen real quick and then I'll show you. Okay, yeah. Let me stop. And then I'll sharing. give it back to you. <laughs> I was, well, no, no, I mean I'm on your test server now. So oh. <laughs> okay, so like sorry, share. Okay. All right. Um, so like here on our no silly thing um and i'm not going to inadvertently show anybody's actual stuff here but you can see what the thing looks like so like because this is our production server so it looks like this and then you can like select from the different years or whatever um and this is sticky so like if i set it on 22 it would stay on 22 um but i found that I think this is annoying. I don't like how it looks um, having the little like label thing above it, but it was affecting all fiscal year combo boxes. So like when you would go to like here, the, the year combo box was really messed up. So um, having it sort of sit on top here was sort of like my my interim solution. But I mean, it works like and we've run this since January and it works great. So, um, but yeah, so like I said, it, it, it works for us, but it's not like fully featured, you know, like you could mm -hmm. choose to do the year instead. It doesn't really like work that great. Um, it's kind of an interim getting us closer yeah. to a long-term. Yeah. And so if you do want the interim solution, it's on the bug that my patch is here, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, so if that's something that like is helpful as like an interim solution. Yeah, I'm going to bring that back to our team because I think that that is the better option for us at this time. Yeah. Um, but it's really exciting to see the fiscal year and fiscal calendars as tabs because I think you know, just being able to see them and see the data that's in those tables actually allows us to start having a conversation about what it would look like and, you know, what information we do and don't want and what we'd expect it to look like. So are, are you guys happy with the order of fiscal years and fiscal calendars? Do you, is that okay? I just kind of like popped them up there because it seemed like you would use calendars less. I was trying to, like, I was trying to figure out how we would use it in our multi-library system. Um, because I imagine, like, for us, we'd have two fiscal calendars. We'd have 
January to December and um, March, nope, April to March. And then on the fiscal year, we'd have a new year using those two calendars for every library. Or would we just have one for each year that all the libraries used? That's what I was thinking of, because I, I think there was discussion on the bug. I think I think it was that bug or it was another one. Um, and I I sort of went back and forth and I think I landed on that I don't I don't know if an org is necessary because like what what would need to be org specific about it? You know, like you may have multiple orgs that would use, you know, like you were saying, the the Jan to December or the um the whatever, July to yeah. June, whatever. But like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you do you really need to like filter it that way? You know what I mean? Like, otherwise you're just duplicating, like you were saying, all, all the time. And so it's more like, well, to me, it's just in there. <laughs> I don't know. And does the year end date do anything in particular? Because for our, like, for example, for our January to December fiscal year libraries, a lot of them don't run year end till the end of January or sometimes like early February. So they're still paying for things that arrive in January with their previous year funds because they haven't closed things out yet. And they're items that were ordered before. So they, it, it fits for them fiscally, I guess. Um, but so would that year end date actually do anything or cause any problems if you don't actually run year end on the year end date? I or is it? Sorry, I, don't, I don't I don't know. I was going to say I was going to say I'm confident, but I'm never going to say I'm confident. But like as of right now, it doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it does nothing. So like all that this does is like it. Um, okay, so the, um, what is it, the combo box that's on the uploader form, it literally is just pulling from this list, and it doesn't care anything about the year begin or year end, it's just the list of fiscal years, and um, there's no, like, active or anything like that, and then all that does is just, if your upload contains funds, it looks if any of the like it looks at what year it should look in for matching funds i don't know if that makes sense but like if mm -hmm. you have funds in your upload that are like adult and you say look in fiscal year 2023 then it's going to match to the adult in 23 and that's the only thing that does like it's no. it's not really like doing anything else now i could see in the future if like where there's that other other bug where like when you're creating a new fund and like the combo box for year was like tied to these, like you could select from like these pre pre-made fiscal years. I could see that maybe you might be like only show ones that are, you know, like within the year begin year end or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I could see that maybe that might come in, but as right now they don't, they don't do anything. <laughs> well, and so I guess as far as like thinking about org units if you had for example a january december which has a fiscal year of 2023 and a july june which has a fiscal year of 2023 does it matter on the like lo load mark order records screen if the fund combo box doesn't or the, i guess the year doesn't know which 2023 does that make sense at all? Yes, my, my thing keeps disappearing. It does, and that actually is a good point. So like, maybe it should show, maybe that combo box should display um, like the like the template or like what it should show. Mm -hmm. It should show the fiscal year and then in like parentheses behind it, it should show the calendar name it's behind, it's with, you know and what I, I mean? I, I got to say, this makes me like this brings me back to thinking that there should be an org selector somewhere so that you can say, oh, actually, can you go to administration, server administration and organizational units? Because 
Um, it has a fiscal calendar Ooh, field. Does it actually take the values that have been? Oh, it does. So, but what does that do, though? How interesting. But it means that it means there's already a way to tell Evergreen which fiscal calendar to use. I don't know what it does past that, but we can tell it. Yeah. So maybe it doesn't need. Um, bye, Deborah. Um, there we go. Bye, Deborah. Um, so maybe it doesn't need an org on the fiscal calendar table because it's already on the org itself. It's mm -hmm. like there's a point, there's a direction pointing. Yeah. Already. And then what what we would need is the load mark order screen and anywhere else where it shows up to know that that library uses the July or July to June fiscal year and only show Fisc or sorry, fiscal calendar and only show fiscal years that um, uh, that fall into that calendar. So it would be. Uh, and Ruth is asking, are we sure the ACK fiscal year and the org fiscal year are the same? I'm pretty sure they are, Ruth, because uh, when we looked at that drop down menu, that's what we've created in Tiffany's new table or new interface. Yeah, because all that's actually like in there like to start with is like default. Yeah. So, but I mean, hmm, even okay. if it does, even if, you know, we aren't at the point where things all link together, being able to just specify in the org unit, which fiscal year somebody's on so that you don't have to forget, like you don't have to ask them or, you know, go digging to remind yourself which one they follow would be helpful. Or sorry, calendar, not year. I keep getting those ones backwards. Do, do they follow more than one or is it usually they've just got one? For our libraries, they all follow one. It's just one of two. Okay. But so it's remembering which libraries are the April through March fiscal year and which ones are the January through December. It tends to divide post-secondary versus public library for us. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so Ruth said, okay, so it could conceivably pull in the short name or something into the admin interface. Into the, into the, um, into the, the fund admin? Low, the fun, yeah, the fund admin or into the... Um... Wherever you want it. <laughs> <laughs> we want it everywhere, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm of a mind that I'd like to see it everywhere, honestly, but... Or yeah. to have, well, yes, that too as an org unit selector, <laughs> but, but in lieu of an org unit selector, having it as a column in the admin that could then be filtered. And it, if you could go back to the fund um, the interface says, yeah. um, it would be useful if it displayed somewhere on here. And I guess it does under owner. That's that short code there. So, well, but if it displayed the fiscal calendar, mm -hmm. like yeah. once you've said which fiscal calendar a library oh. uses, if like mm -hmm. somewhere on this screen, it pulled that information so you could see the fiscal calendar. Mm -hmm. I mean, most libraries probably know which fiscal calendar they use, but you know, it would be useful information for those of us troubleshooting. Has, has a bug report already been, or bug report, yeah, launchpad ticket already been created um, for that? Or are you compiling colum columns that you might like to see in different interfaces? I think There's it's more of the latter. Go there's ahead, a, go ahead, Jennifer. I sorry, I was just gonna say there's a few bugs around fiscal year, fiscal calendar that have had some discussion on them recently, but I don't think there's been a lot of specifics because we didn't have anything to look at until now. Um then now I have a request as somebody also representing ECDI that um this this would not address every year-end thing. But if there are columns that uh, really should be in there to make your lives easier, uh, that a launchpad ticket 
be um, put in because we are coming up to the end of the rewrite of acquisitions into Angular, and we will have a cleanup uh, sprint for that. And I think that these conceivably could be included in that cleanup sprint. And Ruth, is there potentially like sometime in the next few months, depending on timing, like, a, we could make one of the ACK interest group meetings specifically, you know, checking to see if there's cleanup things we like or things that we feel need to become bugs to potentially get captured in that. I mean, from my standpoint, yes, but I'm going to defer to Tiffany as the leader of the interest group. Yeah, for sure. That sounds good. Yeah. I'm just thinking if we could do like a day focused on that or like a meeting focused on that mm -hmm. ahead of the, you know, the specs or whatever, actually mm -hmm. pulling those out, mm -hmm. just coordinating the timing. And, and I will say to, to those uh, who are here who are not part of ECDI, that's okay, because um, adding heat to those launch pad tickets and um, having launch pad tickets in there, we're going to be paying attention to those. And so even if you're not part of ECDI, your, your feedback in that is, is valuable um, for the project that we are working on and useful for the community at large. There's part of me that's just kind of a little like stunned still that we're actually heading towards the end of angularizing act. In a, it's, it's in a good way. <laughs> yeah, and, and then of course there will always be something more. Then, then we can talk about usability and accessibility and Stephanie can get in on, on what our purchase orders look like. Awesome, I'm <laughs> excited about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Lindsay was uh, asking a question. Um, I've been wondering if fiscal year is used in any interface or functionality other than ACK. I don't think it is. No, not to my knowledge, because I mean, the only is the only other money in the system, just like circulation. Is there any other? Yeah, like billing. And I don't think billing. Well, there is also positions really intersect at all because there I remember... is also price, um, which is oh, yeah. which is not acquisitions, but has to do with acquiring and those libraries that are not using acquisitions do oftentimes use that as a way to um, gauge collection value and or what they they have spent on things sort of so well and there's also the cost item attribute that can is used by acquisitions but can also be used by non-acquisitions libraries exactly. if they want to yeah. put uh replacement cost in one of those fields versus actual purchase cost but I don't think Evergreen looks at the fiscal year anywhere else currently. I don't think so either. Because there's really like, nothing that's in that kind of like circular, you know, like manner, really, in the same way that acquisitions is. Kind of well, like you don't like close out other. you don't like close out fines on a yearly basis in the same yeah. way as you close that act. Yeah. Um the one other thing, Tiffany that I'll yeah. say about the fiscal year and fiscal calendars based on how I think we would use them is we would actually want them out of fund administration because I think we would set them up and the libraries, like I don't think our libraries would ever touch them. Where, where, so that's what I wondered, right? Like I put them in there because those tables already exist and it was like dead easy to just put them here in fund administration and get it done. Um, but like, where would you put them? Because I wasn't really sure. I was like, is it too much to just make a whole new like uh, link in administration for them? I mean, I kind of feel like that's where they need to belong. So because like have like a link, like its own link for like fiscal year calendar. And then those would just be in one interface together by themselves. Yeah, because I think for fiscal calendars, you would probably set them up once 
and only ever come back if you had a library migrate that used a very different fiscal calendar. And fiscal year, you would go in and update once or twice a year, depending on how many fiscal calendars you have. But you could set them up quite far in advance if you desired, though I guess you probably wouldn't want to because you wouldn't want them showing on uh, drop down menus that far in advance. I can um, try. I mean, it's not so. Galen signed off on the branch today, um, and he also added. Um, by the way, he added um, like grid, so you can save your grids or whatever. And he did something else good, but I don't remember what it was. Um, but I mean, I can take a crack at putting these in their own like, like their own link here. Um, yeah, if you guys want me to. I just it's think not that fixed yet. Yeah, I just think they're much more along the lines of like invoice payment method, cancel reasons, currencies and exchange rates and like things that you touch occasionally, but especially if the libraries themselves are not going to be doing them, it's better not to have them super visible. Can I crowdsource what the link should say? Like, should it just be <laughs> say crickets? <laughs> should it just be like fiscal year? Say calendar? Like label to be determined. <laughs> I mean, we have currencies and exchange rates, so it could be fiscal calendars and years. Okay. Can I suggest that we swap that and do fiscal years and calendars? Does that make Absolutely. sense? Absolutely. I am I am not married to either. I I I'm looking way ahead to where we may eventually build some sort of like find this setting by name search feature. And if the phrase fiscal year is together, it will help. Okay, that's cool. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay, cool. Then I and will um Go ahead, I'm sorry. Sorry, just one one last question. So do the fiscal year, like the, the load mark order record, is it the fiscal year table that it's pulling what it shows in that dropdown? Am I understanding that correctly or is that a? Yes, you are correct. Okay, so do we maybe need an active flag? That's what I was wondering. And I was wondering if like, if it should be active or if it should only pull things that are within that, where did it go? If it's in that year end, year begin, or like if those should be used for anything, because I mean, what would we, we use, what would you use them for? We definitely have libraries that will sometimes have two fiscal years simultaneously if they're trying to finish off stuff in the old one while starting to order in the new one. Um, so I don't think we would want it just to show the current year, um, but I don't see a ton of value in really old years showing. I like the idea of possibly if a year has been closed out, um, which I think it, to a certain degree it does this, uh, but there being an active flag and that closing it out deactivates that flag. Um, but yeah, but then, and then having the ability to kind of base on that so that if it's not closed out, it's still active and visible. And then you could still filter uh, by one year or the other or 15 years, I guess, um, if you never close out anything. And maybe also have the ability to, um, in the fiscal year administration, also um, explicitly activate or deactivate that flag. So have an automated part to it and a manual part to it. So I'm, I'm literally thinking on my feet here, right? So that's the wrong place. Um, so when we do this, we do specify a year. So mm -hmm. we could say, you know, when I choose this year and I process it, 
as part of that this year gets deactivated. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that, that could, that could be a thing, but if we're sharing between different org units years, that wouldn't work. So if we Mm. did that, then we would have to explicitly add orgs onto the fiscal years. That's a very good point. That would be a very unfortunate discovery uh, if we, you know, if we went live and the first person to deactivate the year. (laughs) So can you do? But can you can you go ahead and open that up again real quickly? Yeah. Uh, And so it it does have a context org unit, and it would just be. But the fiscal year on the fiscal year tab is not specific to the org unit. Right. Okay. It could be, but it's not currently. I apologize. I need to take a phone call. I'll be right back. So, I mean, we can still do like the, the, um, you know, like the column for active, but it would probably be more like manually deactivating it, like kind of like at the, you know, like at the consortial level, you know, whoever is setting up years in the first place saying, okay, everybody closed out 23, let's deactivate it or something like that. Well, I mean, I think our funds go back to like 2012. Yeah. So the longer you use acquisitions, the more you would like to be able to remove some of those from the list. Because I think, does it, um, if I understand it correctly. So like in the old um, upload interface, it's just like calling a list of funds from like all of your funds ever. So does you guys and list um show back to like 2012 i'm just going in to see what it does um our list actually goes back to 2011 okay there we go (laughs) so it shows all the way back to 2011 so it would be cool to like not have those in the list anymore yes but i think that you would want them to not show in the list on the lord the load mark order record interface but you would still want to be able to retrieve those past years on the fund admin interface. But like from the like year filter, right? Not yeah. like, so like if we- No, no, from the we, year filter. Right, so like here, this one. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, and Mary is asking, what does fiscal year do for a record upload? So it really, um, it really matters the most if you are running multiple, fis- like if you have multiple active fiscal years, uh, or I guess multiple fiscal years with active funds, because Evergreen won't upload to inactive funds. But so if, for instance, you are uploading a file um, to uh, to purchase for items that you know you're going to buy in 2024, but you haven't quite finished dealing with 2023, and you have 2024 and 2023 as options there. If you pick 2023, the file gets uploaded using your 2023 funds instead of your 2024 funds. Does that make sense, Mary? Yeah, so our our libraries for a lot of them, the funds are the fund code is part of the um, uh, the holdings field in the mark record for our libraries. So if you don't lo- load funds, it won't really affect you. But if you load funds and you pick the wrong fiscal year, it causes problems. The year doesn't do anything for you guys. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, if I remember correctly, like, basically exactly the same thing Jennifer already said, but, you know. Uh, so, like, when you do the upload, if you have a fund in your file, it looks at the org in your, in the form, and then it looks at the year in your form, and then it says, okay, for this title, you said use fund adult. Is there an adult? fund called adult 
at this org in this year. Okay, apply it. So if you left it at 22, it would apply at the adult 22 fund at that org. So that was like, that was why we were having problems too, like with, um, uh, what was it? Like decentralized funds. So like yeah. if the fund was own, owned by the branch, um, but in the uploader, we were trying to use the system because that was like the ordering agency. Um, so that was a problem for us, but that's basically, it looks at the org and the year and decides which fund to apply it to. And I haven't looked at it in a while, but I believe if you pick a year that you have no active funds in and then try to upload your file, you'll get some, one of the ACK error messages that doesn't really tell you why it's returning it. But so like if you accidentally picked 2014 instead of 2024, I think you'd get ACK import error or, you know, one of the other ones that pops up because Evergreen can't use the funds that are set to inactive. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop us real quick because I have one yep. quick question and we only have three minutes. So for our, our high priority bug, where is it? Um, no, it's not on this one screen. Um, this one, basically that it, it only accepts the current fiscal year. Is it a reasonable fix that to have these interfaces available now? Because since the combo box is looking for ACK fiscal year and now you can create them on your own, is that a reasonable fix for this? I think so. I say this without any real testing, but I think so. Is, I think, is Lindsay, Lindsay, are you the one that opened this? I'm sorry, I think so, right? Or no, you're not the one that opened it, but I remember you were bringing it up. So is this a, would you consider this a fix that now you can create these years yourself? Um, let me, yeah, so that is actually based on a uh, ticket that I placed with Equinox because we suddenly realized we could not, uh, um, upload any uh any records um so and i'm sorry for putting you on the spot you don't have to <laughs> yeah no i'm You're not sure got like a couple <laughs> uh, a couple of you know fires going on in the background here no no, um, no worries so if we could if there were a, a way for me through a user interface um upload uh fiscal years yeah that would absolutely work as it stands right now i would have because we're hosted i would have to have our vendor do that which also is not a problem but um it seems to me that it would make more sense to have yeah, I don't know, like, you know, kind of like we were talking about now having, you know, actual fiscal years or being able to say, you know, this is a, you know, June to July fiscal year library versus this other one is January to December. You know, I think that kind of bigger long term fix would be preferable. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think so. So like in in the in the short term. Mm -hmm. Then, so if you're uploading with, you know, 23 funds, is it acceptable to have a 23 or 24, I guess 24, I'm sorry, um, in the drop down? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I long as there's a sure. mechanism to get it, that in there so that we can actually upload our <laughs> records okay. short term. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Because it seemed like that would be a fit, like, like a short term fix for it, but I because it's high priority, I didn't want to like unilaterally like decide that. Yeah, no, it just I, so this discussion has actually, at least in my opinion, been pretty great, you know, <laughs> and, and hashing through some of the the different, you know, ways to handle this. But I just want to be able to upload my orders. <laughs> She's like, really, I just I just want to do my job. Just let me do it. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, I mean, it's a pretty essential part of acquisitions. Right. Like, I kind of need to do that. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Okay, so what I'll do then, um, and then I'll let us all go, um, is 
um, I will try, I will take a crack at um, just putting those in their own like little like menu option or whatever instead of with fund administration. Um, and then, yeah, so hopefully that'll, that'll work fine and then everybody can do their thing. Um, and hopefully that will solve this. So for those who do the, um, the year uploads. And Tiffany, I think it was in one of the bug for or in yeah one of the bugs, um, and you said both interfaces are controlled by that admin act fiscal year end permission. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So libraries can then grant or not grant as needed. Right. Like I I double checked who actually has that by default. Like in in Maine, I'm trying to get good about saying it. Um, and the acquisitions administrator profile has it by default. So if they wanted to like, you know, adjust that, however, whoever should have that, then, then that's yep. it. But I wasn't going to try and mess with the, the perm at all. Um, like nope, that makes sense. Master. Okay, awesome. Well, this is Great, I will rewatch it so I can remember what I forgot um, and probably open some like follow up bugs, like kind of like what Ruth was saying, um, especially once those two interfaces for um, fiscal years and calendars are actually like in main, then um, I can sort of link to that as well. So thank you so much, everybody. I'm gonna let you go. I know everybody's probably had a long day. <laughs> so um, I hope you have a great rest of your day and thank you so much for coming. Thank you guys. Thanks, Stephanie. Thank you.